For close to four decades, WWE has put on pay-per-views for fans to enjoy. WWE's production is out of this world and their attention to detail is second to none when they want to produce stellar pay-per-views. However, despite boasting strong rosses, WWE is not exempt from producing underwhelming pay-per-views that should have been miles better. The flow of the card and the sheer quality of poor matches have failed to live up to the expectation. Of course, not every pay-per-view is going to have five-star classic, but fans who part ways with their money expect to have watchable shows. I'm the Wrestling Guy and thank you for joining me for another list video here on the channel. Join us as today we break down the top 10 worst WWE pay-per-views of all time. Number 10. In Your House, Great White North, 1995 For the first time since WrestleMania 6, WWE hosted a pay-per-view in Canada. In Your House, Great White North took place on October 22nd, 1995 and it was extremely underwhelming. Home favourites Bret Hart and Owen Hart were relegated to dark matches, which was bizarre. Razor Ramon pulled double duty as he unsuccessfully challenged for the WWE Tag Team titles with the 1-2-3 kid. However, he became a four-time Intercontinental Champion when he beat Dean Douglas for the gold later on in the night. Rounding things off, Diesel retained the WWE Championship against the British Bulldog, albeit via a disqualification loss in a mediocre main event. Exposing WWE's roster's depth and creative issues at the time, the show offered nothing to celebrate outside of a decent tag team title match. In other lowlights, Goldust made his much-anticipated WWE debut after an age of vignettes hyping his arrival and regrettably proceeded to bore everyone to tears in his lifeless bout with Marty Jannetty. Yokozuna's super heavyweight clash with King Mabel was designed to be an attraction, but it was painful for the five minutes it lasted and ended in an unsatisfactory double countout. Even Vince McMahon calling the action on commentary made reference to its less than stellar quality. And in the opener, Hunter Host Helmsley beat Fatu in an alright match. Number 9, The Great American Bash 2004 The Great American Bash 2004 is extremely lacklustre, but it is best remembered for two things. JBL ending Eddie Guerrero's WWE Championship reign in a Texas Bull Rape match, and The Undertaker saw off the Dudley Boys in a handicapped concrete crypt match, which resulted in him pulling the lever which sealed his long-term manager Paul Bearer's fate, who was enclosed in a glass box with cement filling it up. Other than Rey Mysterio and Chavo Guerrero's outstanding Cruiserweight Championship match, the rest of the card was what you would expect to see on an episode of SmackDown. Kenzo Suzuki vs Billy Gunn, Sable beating Tori were all dreadful affairs. Number 8, Battleground 2017 WWE produced some stinker pay-per-views in 2017 and Battleground was absolutely atrocious. The standard of matches on the SmackDown exclusive event was bitterly disappointing for fans to endure. Barring the New Day's SmackDown Tag Team Championship win over the Usos, the rest of the card failed to produce magic. Punjabi prison matches have never worked and Jinder Mahal beat Randy Orton to retain the WWE Championship. The Great Khali made a one-off appearance to help Mahal prevail and Kevin Owens beat AJ Styles for the United States title, which was surprisingly poor and John Cena outlasted Bruce Ev in a flag match. Not that anyone cares about that one. Number 7. Backlash 2018 Backlash 2018 started off promising enough and then completely fell off a cliff, never to recover. Kicking things off with Seth Rollins retaining his Intercontinental title over the Miz in a 20-minute false field blinder that nothing else on the show came close to touching. Nia Jax retained the Raw Men's title over Alexa Bliss and then matched that cooled things down, though it was okay. Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton didn't have much of a reason to be fighting over the United States title on pay-per-view either, and the Vipers showed just how little he could be bothered with the whole thing by putting in a half hour performance and helping to produce a very dull match. Carmella retained her SmackDown Women's title over Charlotte Flair in a boring match with a weak finish. Speaking of weak finishes, how about AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura's no disqualification WWE title scrap going to a draw? The action was good, not as great as you'd expect, and had crowd heat, but the ending really put a dampener on things. The less said about Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley's victory over Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, the better. Just a total mess on almost every single level. And, it, and in a supposed main event, Roman Reigns beat Samoa Joe in a match that had no business headlining and literally bored the crowd out of the building, as many fans chose to exit the arena while the bout was still in progress. Number 6. Super Showdown 2019 WWE's pay-per-views in Saudi Arabia have been hit and miss and Super Showdown 2019 was definitely forgettable. The opening match between Seth Rollins and Baron Corbin for the Universal title wasn't fun to watch and Shane McMahon battled past Roman Reigns all thanks to Drew McIntyre. Randy Orton and Triple H had a long 25-minute showdown which wasn't one of their best encounters and Mansoor managed to prevail in a 51-man battle royal to wow the home crowd. However, The Undertaker and Goldberg's clash came 20 years too late with neither man at the peak of their powers and Goldberg sustained a concussion, as well as him nearly ending The Undertaker's career with a jackknife powerbomb. Number 5. Survivor Series 1999 
WWE were on a real hot streak in late 1999, but unfortunately their pay-per-view output didn't always measure up to standards. That year's Survivor Series was certainly a memorable show featuring historic debuts and major title matches, but it was far from good. One of the things that really damaged the show was the company's insistence on advertising Steve Austin for the WWE title triple threat match, which included Triple H and The Rock. Despite knowing far in advance that he was due to undergo neck surgery and wouldn't be able to perform as scheduled, so they shot the angle that had him getting run over by an unseen assailant in the parking lot, giving WWE K Fab reasons to remove him from the main event, replacing him in it with The Big Show, who went on to win the belt in a lane match. It was a disappointing end to a disappointing show, the best moment of which was somewhat amazingly China and Chris Jericho's Intercontinental Title Affair. Number 4 Crown Jewel 2018 WWE's second trip to Saudi Arabia in 2018 was unsuccessful with a poor event at Crown Jewel 2018. The majority of the show was focused on crowning the winner of the World Cup. Shane McMahon replaced The Miz and he defeated Dolph Ziggler, which was illogical, to become the self-proclaimed best in the world. Brock Lesnar defeated Braun Strowman for the vacant Universal Championship in a lousy three-minute affair. However, Shawn Michaels brought his eight-year stint in retirement to a halt when he decided to team up with Triple H in a horrific tag team match against the Brothers of Destruction, which was full of botches and eventually injuries. Number 3. Super Showdown 2020 Yes, another Saudi Arabia show. Before the COVID-19 pandemic took a stronghold on the world in 2020, WWE's final trip to Saudi Arabia for 20 months was a complete disaster. Super Showdown 2020 was a complete waste of time, despite Bailey and Naomi making history as the first pair of women to compete for a WWE Championship in Saudi Arabia. Brock Lesnar scores Ricochet in a successful WWE Championship title defence that barely lasted two minutes. The Undertaker made a quick cameo by winning the gauntlet match for the Mountain Trophy. How you can win something just by turning up and not even being in the match is completely beyond me. However, in typical Goldberg fashion, he captured his second Universal Championship at the Fiend's expense in another squash match. Two World Championship matches not lasting five minutes on pay-per-view is completely inexcusable. Number 2. King of the Ring 1995 The 1995 version of the tournament was a pay-per-view with essentially zero quality. The company's decision to make Mabel, previously a member of Men on a Mission stable, the King, resulted in widespread condemnation. His path to the crown saw him get past The Undertaker and then Xavier Vega in a pair of horrible matches. The rest of the tournament wasn't anything to write home about either. Outside of the tournament, Bret Hart finally got a victory over Jerry Lauder in a Kiss My Foot match. More about the moment than the actual match. It accomplished what it set out to do, but the rest of the card did absolutely nothing to progress forward. Number 1. December to Dismember 2006 before ECW December to December went on the air, only two matches had been announced. A tag team match between Eminem and the Hardys, none of whom were ECW wrestlers, which turned out to be a decent, if not overly long, opener. And the Extreme Elimination Chamber for the ECW title, which started out well, got worse as it went on, and ended on a sour note as hand-picked hero Bobby Lashley overcame crowd favourites like CM Punk and Rob Van Dam, as well as Big Show, Test, Hardcore Holy to claim the gold. Each of Matt Stryker vs. Balls Mahoney, Tommy Dreamer vs. Davari, and Mike Knox and Kelly Kelly vs. Ariel and Kevin Foran were the sort of matches you'd either fast forward to or go grab a beer during if you were watching them on free TV. The booking was so bad that Paul Heyman left the company immediately after, while Tommy Dreamer and Stevie Richards handed in their notices and made clear that they didn't want to be part of whatever this version of ECW was. Unfortunately for them, their requests were denied. Paying in comparison to the lively one night stand show of the previous two summers, December to Dismember, the first standalone ECW pay per view since the reboot, essentially killed off the brand as a product. To conclude, WWE is best known for its stellar storytelling and creative development. Over the years, the talent rosters have gone from strength to strength, and this has resulted in some fantastic and memorable shows that will forever be recognised in wrestling history as the greats. Unfortunately, as with anything, as well as some of the best, there is also moments that WWE prefers wrestling fans to forget. As always, guys, this is just my own personal opinion, and there are plenty of other options that could be included. If you guys have enjoyed this list and would like to see more lists like this here on the channel, make sure you're subscribing and hitting the thumbs up button. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.